beginning of this renovation this front facade was a mess we had mismatched decking boards running the length of the house we had disintegrating corrugated iron sheeting for the veranda and we had a mix of plants which um, may have been intentionally planted or may have just shown up over the years it was really hard to tell um, but there was certainly a lot of work to be done at this street facing side of the house so the first thing of course was to clear out all of the greenery um, so we can start with a fresh canvas and really you know make it how, how we like with the plants and weeds cleared it was time to decide on a style for this front yard and um, front facade now there were obviously a few options could go with the classic white picket fence maybe some flower beds or even an ornamental commodore but in the end I decided to go with some box hedges and a few decorative trees. So with the box hedging I started off with some reclaimed bricks just um, framing out basically where these hedges are going to go. The reason I went for the bricks is because I wanted more of like an old English cottage garden um, for a couple of reasons. It suits the Victorian style of the property and it is also very low maintenance um, compared to like say flower beds or something like that where you need to be constantly looking after them. So with these plants in place, planted, um, I got that done early on just so they had some time to grow. Um, I then brought in some old sandstone, which was actually salvaged from an 1850s property. And I used that sandstone to create two flagstone paths leading up to each front door. Now I think one of my biggest issues when it comes to doing anything in the yard is as soon as the soil turned I'm immediately looking for old stuff and um, these paths, this path makeover was definitely no exception because I did spot a token lying in the soil and it is a palm olive uh, soap token which I believe is from the 1920s or 30s very cool someone that lived in this house was holding this uh, about 100 years ago and with the front paths done next up was our dividing picket fence before we start pulling up the old decking and replacing the joists <laughs> Now with our supporting timbers replaced and our decking framing um, able to safely hold the weight of a person um, we can start laying our new decking boards and when I say new um, these decking boards possibly are older than this house uh, they were salvaged from another um, very old property just like the sandstone uh, blocks that we use for the footpath and these will of course be sanded and stained later on but at this point in time we're just going to get them down and fixed in so we can have somewhere safe to work a few weeks before i actually started um, redoing this facade i actually came across this old photo of the house um, that does show a bullnose veranda in two colors now it's a black and white photo so i'll never know which colors these truly were but they are um, contrasting as soon as i saw this i knew i had to reinstate this feature <laughs> So anyway, went online, um, ordered a bullnose to suit the house in the two-tone colour. I ended up going with a basalt and a surf mist, I believe it's called, which is just a white and a grey, basically, um, which I think will complement the home very well. And now while I was installing those decking boards, um, the bullnose veranda did arrive and I just couldn't help myself. I just had to get it up there because um, the anticipation, the, the, the thought of what it looked like was eating away at me and it just needed to be up. So we went ahead um, with the deck basically half down. The bullnose was going up and it was quite a job, but we ended up getting it done in three days. So yeah, pretty good. <laughs>
but with this new veranda roof on and looking amazing, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Um, it was time to bring our attention back to the actual decking and um, continue installing that, sand it and stain it. While this stain dries, let's check out some of the other external projects from around the house. So we installed a new deck, um, which used reclaimed black butt boards from the 1915 house that was going to be demolished. Um, so that was great, it was a great cost saver, but also a great um, thing for the environment, not cutting down more trees. And third thing, of course, it is you know, a nice little historic touch um, to add into the home. Two fences also went up, um, as well as a complete makeover of the shed. That one got all new weatherboards all around it, a couple new doors and um, a nice coat of paint. A post and rail fence was installed along the front boundary and I planted Mariah's um, along there so in the next few years hopefully they'll grow up and there'll be a nice bit of privacy. Fruit trees and a range of natives were also planted along with a few garden beds and a couple more figs in the backyard just for some more um, greenery and in the future some more shade. I then had a stack of sandstone left over from those front two flagstone parts so I made use of those along the side of the house um, now, originally, the side of this house when I bought it um, was just mud and synthetic turf, which is not um, the greatest, especially if you've you know, got guests coming over and whatnot. So, I thought sandstone will be perfect fit here because, you know, easy to clean, easy to maintain. And there we have it, the deck is dry and complete. All that is left to do now in the front facade is install the dividing wall and, of course, put some nice sensor lighting in both sides. And just like that, we are done. Step out, would you duck it out? Would you be here to the end? I just wanna know if you my friend.